Okay, what's up everyone? So in this video, I am going to be migrating an Arch Linux installation to Parabola without having to uninstall the whole thing. Um, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, so Arch Linux, you, you probably know what it is. It's the Linux distribution I uh, have been using for a while. And of course, a lot of my subscribers use it. But my favorite Linux distribution is actually Parabola. Um, don't have huge strong uh, feelings about it, but it's probably my favorite, all things considered. Um, and what it is, is just a version of Arch Linux with only free software. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be migrating an Arch Linux system to a Parabola system. Um, so I totally recommend you use Parabola. It has some extra security features and privacy features and stuff like that. Um, it just do, it won't load proprietary blobs and it won't install free software. Now that's good in terms of freedom and privacy or whatever. Um, but on the machine I was using before, the X220, and on a lot of other laptops, um, sometimes the Wi-Fi card, it's usually the Wi-Fi card that gives you problems. It won't have, you won't be able to install, uh, you know, you won't actually be able to run it because it needs some kind of proprietary blob. Um, so I prefer to always use Parabola unless I run into something like that. Um, you can actually cheat and make it work if you change the kernel, but, uh, you know, who's not going to do, I'm not going to do that. Um, so in this video... Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because, of course, I was using my X220 as my main machine. Now I'm using my X200, and I have it Libre booted with a Etheros uh, Wi-Fi card. So now I can have all free software, no problem, which is what I used to do a couple months ago. So anyway, so in this video, we're going to run through this. Uh, so here, of course, Parabola It is one of the few FSF-approved 100% uh, free distributions, just so you know. Um, now, there are guides out there uh, on how to migrate from Arch Linux to Parabola. I'm more or less going to be following these with my own additions and own clarifications about what actually is going on. Um, but uh, aside from that, it, it should be pretty simple. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing started. So let's open up a terminal. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, so we're going to be installing another distribution on our machine where we don't have we don't need a live CD or anything like that we can do it within the machine so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually make it so we can install foreign packages with Pac-Man because normally um, Pac-Man requires I'm actually I'm going to become root uh, Pac-Man requires uh, a package to be signed with some kind of Arch Linux approved signature so the first thing we got to do is I'm going to open up the Pac-Man conf and what you want to do is you want to find this line here, the remote file SIG level. Um, that's the important thing. Now, by default, it's going to be commented out and it's going to say required. What we want to do is uncomment it and change required to never and just save that for the time being. Now, this is a dangerous setting to keep set like this. We only need it for a minute or so. Um, but uh, as, as of right now, it's not going to be checking packages for signatures. But that's what we want for the time being. So I'm going to pull up another terminal. And all we need to do with this is, uh, again, I'm going to be uh, root. Um, uh, don't want to put in my password, too lazy. Um, so I'm going to be root. And what you're going to want to run is pacman. And then we're going to install a particular package on the internet. And it is at https colon slash slash parabola dot new uh, oops parabola dot new slash packages slash libre slash any and that the package name is going to be parabola keyring parabola hyphen keyring did I spell that right it looks like it and we're gonna go to downloads downloads or is it download I wrote it down yes download. Um, now when you run that, what this is going, just doing is installing uh, the Parabola keyring package from the internet directly. So now it is going to add all of the uh, developer keys from all the people who work on Parabola you know, to your keyring so they can actually get approved. Um, now the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to move this up, just go back to the same command you had before and instead of Parabola keyring, you want to put in uh, pacman pacman mirror list so this is going to download the like all the different parabola repo or mirrors out there where you can download files from because of course as of right now if you have an arch linux system it's just using the uh you know arch uh excuse me yeah yeah the arch mirrors or whatever okay so now that that's done you should go back to your etsy dot dot or excuse me etsy pacman.conf and change this back to required or comment it out or something like that. I'm pretty sure if you just comment it out, the default is required, but uh, you know, anyway. Um, so just save that and that's all you need to change with this file, uh, or 
well, actually, no, it's not all you need to change file with this file, but that's all you need to do with the file signature. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is go down to where it says uh, it lists out all the different repositories. So we have uh, core, extra, community. Um, now we're going to want to add two things. Well, we're going to want to add at least one thing, possibly two. One is you want to put in a Libra category because um, Parabola uses Libra to keep most of its packages in. Uh, or the Libra ones, of course, uh, and you're going to want to just copy what you have down here in these lines up here, um, and this is going to allow Pac-Man to actually look at, at all of you know these uh, files or whatever. Um, in addition to that, you probably want to add um, instead of Libra, put in uh, what is it? Uh, no Prism. Uh, now this isn't necessary, but Parabola has this very nice repository of. Uh, basically hardened software for privacy reasons um, and it has some additional security features and you know it'll have better versions more private versions of certain like things like iStuff or something like that and I think it's just nice to have so I always uh, add this as well so once you're done with that you can go ahead and save and quit um, so now what we're going to do is clear the Pac-Man uh, cache. So how you do that is, is of course Pac-Man SCC. So this is going to get rid of all the Arch Linux packages that are just you know in your cache. So you say yes to both of these, um, and that's that. Now you have gotten rid of all those packages. The next okay, actually I realized I just forgot something. Um, so one thing you're going to want to do is when we install that mirror list. Uh, you have, oh, where is it? So in Etsy slash pacman.d, uh, you are going to have two files, two mirror list files, one just plain mirror list and one mirror list .pack new. So mirror list is the Arch Linux mirror list that we already had. And when you install that new mirror list, it put it right here. So we're just going to want to replace the old mirror list with the new one. Uh, so I, just for safety, I guess, I'm going to uh, take the first mirror list and I'm going to back it up. You know, we'll say Pacman D mirror list dot arch or something like that. Um, and then I'm going to uh, copy, uh, let's see, I'm going to copy the pack new uh, mirror list directly to where arches or arch and parabola are going to be looking for your mirror list, which is just in the mirror list file. Um, so that's all you have to do there. Now, once you've done that, we can actually update our packages and download and, well, let's just do it. So this is going to be your first update on Parabola, so to speak, uh, although you haven't really installed anything on it. Uh, but it's going to start syncing. You're going to see it's loading the Libra repository. It's loading the core repository and everything else. It should, should load uh, no prism as well if you put that. So I'm going to wait for a second. And now, it's probably going to be installing a lot of stuff after this, but I want to get to the confirm uh, and then I'll probably cut off all the the intensive stuff. But this is going to be the period where it's going to actually be installed. Oh, well, that's it. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's not going to upgrade. I didn't tell it to upgrade. So that was just syncing the repositories. Now we actually have to upgrade. I was talking like we were going to upgrade packages. Um, so now what you want to do is, so what you can do is just Pacman suu. This is going to upgrade packages. The two U's mean that it's also going to downgrade packages if their, like, addition number is... Uh, you know, older uh, on the parabola mirrors, just in case, because sometimes it is. Um, so I'm also going to want to put in a couple other things. Uh, you want to say Pac-Man explicitly because uh, you want that Pac-Man itself to be totally refreshed. And there are two other things you should add. One is the package Your Freedom. So Your Freedom is a nice little feature that Parabola has. It is a blacklist program. How it works is it's a program that doesn't do anything, but it has conflicts built into it with every known non-free software. So when you install your freedom, it basically, whenever you try and install a non-free program, it says, hello, this is not a free program, just telling you that um, this, this causes a conflict with it. So it's a nice way of making sure you don't have any non-free programs on your computer. Um, and if you did add the non-PRISM uh, repository, you can also install the package, no, your privacy. 
And this does the same thing. So your privacy, it doesn't target non-free software. It targets free software that might integrate with non-free, you know, cloud services or something like that. Like if it sends metadata to Amazon or Google or something like that, your privacy will say, hey, watch out, this program uh, does some things that you might not like, not like or something like that. So when, I, when we run that, um, what it's going to do is it's going to start asking you uh, some replacements. So I have installed Firefox. I don't actually use Firefox, but it's uh, I installed it just for this. <laughs> um, so it's going to ask me, do I want to replace Firefox with IceCat? So there are a couple things in Parabola that are rebranded or renamed that there they might be forks. So IceCat is a fork of Firefox that has a whole lot other you know privacy features and stuff like that. So just say yes to all of these. Uh, I don't know why it's asking both uh, Ice Cat and Ice Weasel, but whatever. Um, so, uh, in, importantly, it's definitely going to ask you if you want to replace Linux with the Linux Libra kernel. Uh, so, pretty much say yes to everything. Um, yes, 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 yes. You'll notice that, uh, so there are a couple things here, like a bunch of my LaTeX packages, the Parabola repositories. The, don't worry about this, they look like errors, but they're no problem. The Parabola repositories, it looks like right now, have older versions of these. That's totally fine, don't sweat it. Um, and it also says here, uh, it can't find a package required for the upgrade for uh, uh, UNRAR. So I'm just gonna say yes to this, I'll worry about this later. But it looks like it can't find an equivalent of this, even though it has non-free software in it. So most of the stuff you're gonna be dealing with, it's gonna be totally fine, since there are just equivalents in the Parabola repository. But in this case, when it's with UNRAR, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to double check all this. Uh, so I'm gonna say yes to that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here's the big install. It's nearly, <laughs> this, so this, what this install is gonna do is it's gonna replace everything in your Arch Linux system with the Parabola equivalent. So I'm gonna run this, I'm gonna cut the video off for the time being, uh, and I'll see you when this thing gets uh, done. Okay, and we're back. Uh, I actually went for a walk and did some other chores and I was gone, I think over an hour, but uh, yeah, so yours probably didn't take anywhere near that long. I don't know how long mine took. Um, so if you look at mine right here, you actually see a bunch of errors. If you see something like that, these come from the LaTeX packages. You can just ignore them. They're not uh, fatal. Um, but you'll see that it pretty much, it successfully installed pretty much everything. Uh, and to prove the, to you that we are actually on Parabola, uh, I had brought up an art screen fetch when it began installing. But if I run NeoFetch again, and you will see that I am now on Parabola. So. Uh, yeah, we've successfully switched over, uh, but but we're not quite done yet. Um, we have to redo the bootloader, and we also have to um, uh, well I'll talk about some other things in general. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead. Um, so one thing you're going to want to do, uh, well you're going to have to do is renew your get a new Grub config or whatever bootloader you're using. I'm going to assume you're using Grub. Uh, well, actually, I'm not going to assume that, but I'm using Grub, so I'm going to I'm going to put in the commands for it. Um, all you have to do is uh, grub, of course this is as root still, uh, just remake your config just like you did when you were installing Arch Linux or whatever. Uh, so grub make config with the outfit to, or output to boot grub, grub cfg. Um, and that's all you're going to have to do. I, did it add another file here? Okay, I guess it saved some backup or something like that. Um, but anyway, just output it to grub.cfg and that should run and that should be it. Um, so at this point, you should be able to boot up and come back. Uh, actually, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reboot my computer and see if it works. I hope it did. It would be awkward if I, uh, well, I guess you wouldn't know. It wouldn't be awkward because no one would know because I wouldn't put the video up. But anyway, I'm gonna reboot and come back in just a second. Actually, hold on, before I do, I noticed something. Uh, the screen fetch I took uh, uh, of Arch Linux, I was actually re recompiling two videos at the same time and my CPU usage was 101%. Um, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to note that. All right, so rebooting now. I'll see you guys in a second. Okie dokie, so looks like we have a successful boot. Um, so if you're using another bootloader that's not Grub, uh, you're gonna have to, of course, do different things. If you're using SysLinux or something else, I assume that if you installed Arch and you installed your bootloader yourself, you know how to do that. Uh, you can look it up on the wiki if you don't. Uh, I would show you, but of course I, I can't do anything. I mean, since I only have Grub, I only have Grub, so that's what I can do. Um, so anyway, uh, but yeah, so now we've successfully installed this. The computer is now 100% free. 
um, you'll see that since I'm using the X200 and I have an Etheros uh, Wi-Fi device, um, I do still have my Wi-Fi, it's working fine. Um, again, the one caveat when installing Parabola or usually other, or, well, any free software distro that's 100% free is the thing most likely to mess up is your Wi-Fi device. A lot of laptops are not gonna work or they're not gonna have free software Wi-Fi devices. So that's the one thing you need to look up. If it's Aetheros, you're probably fine. Anything else, it might be a little suspect. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, so anyway, that, that's the one caveat. Okay, so a couple things about um, differences between Arch and Parabola. Um, so first off, what about the AUR? Um, so by default, I'll put it this way, Parabola, from my experience, has more stuff in its default repositories than Arch. Um, they of course have, they have Libra packages only, uh, but they put some of the stuff that that's on Arch and the AUR in the main repositories. So you, do, you don't necessarily need any kind of AUR manager. Uh, in fact, I don't think they'll work exactly ha as they're intended on Parabola. Now let's say you, that said, you can build anything from the AUR. Um, so any, of, any package build that works on Arch should work on Parabola. Your only potential problem is theoretically there might be a dependency that Parabola can't pull because uh, it's all free. Um, but that, that's never happened to me. I mean, for all normal programs, you're going to be totally fine uh, building them from the AUR. Um, so in order to do that, actually, I have a really ad hoc solution to that that's really lazy. Um, that is, I literally just have a command called AUR install that I've had on my computer for a while. And literally what you do is you just say, like, uh, AUR install and then, you know, XYZ. And what that does is it there's no error reporting or anything. It literally just downloads the program XYZ from the AUR and tries to compile it. And that's it. Um, so that's actually what I do when I really need something from the AUR. But I don't think there are probably a couple programs I'm running on my machine now that are like I would need the AUR for. But again, Parabola's repos have a lot of stuff that Arch doesn't, or at least in my experience, there are some things like they, they I think they put like i3 gaps in the main repos before Arch did. Uh, I don't even know when Arch did, but I think it was pretty recent. Um, so anyway, that's just to keep note of it. Otherwise, managing Parabola is pretty much exactly the same as managing Arch. Um, again, the, the biggest, well, I actually, no, not really again, because I haven't said this before, but if you're an Arch user, you probably know that what you should, in addition to updating regularly, um, you should always check the RSS feed for Arch Linux. And the same applies for Parabola. Um, you should be checking uh, the Parabola RSS feed in your RSS feed reader. I mean, it's not going to be anything daily, but every couple of months you might need to do something manually, but that applies to Arch Linux just as well. So otherwise, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same. The same experience of Arch, just with, um, you know, software that, you know, is all free and more privacy respecting and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, that's about it. So I'll see you guys next time. Hope you learned something and uh, have a good one.